Hi, I'm Eric, and for this episode of Adventures in Golf, we're bringing you to Nottingham, England, where a contemporary art gallery is getting into the golf game. Somehow we have boarding passes and now we're going. This is insane. I have no idea what to expect. The adventure always begins on the tarmac. Four rounds of golf one day, 207 shots. Start your watch, off you go. Thank you. You wanna go first? Sure. Why would you ever stop golfing? It's definitely an adventure. We're a contemporary art gallery. Uh, we have lots of temporary exhibitions. Our main focus is on culturally diverse art. So we want to ensure that all of the exhibitions have cultural relevance and that they can be appreciated by lots of different people, which I think Leisureland Golf definitely can, yes. So where did the idea for Leisureland come from? Leisureland, I, I have to say. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're like Doug, that's what he right. says. This is Leisureland Golf, which is a 10-hole well, they call it crazy golf here. We mostly call it mini golf back home in the States. And the idea was that each of the holes is designed by a different artist. Okay, well, this is the check-in. This is the check-in. It's called the leisure principle because it's a bit about leisure and consumerism and tourism in general. Should we put a fiver on it? All right, All right. deal. I haven't so... made any money today. I'm, you know, <laughs> I got kids. So, I've got to... so we wanted to ask artists to think about those things from the vantage point of each of them as an artist, but through mini golf, because it's, it's, a, it's a leisure sport. I mean, right. do you call it a sport? It's not very I don't know if mini golf taxing. is a sport. I, golf Real, is golf a sport. Golf is a sport, unless you just ride the cart and get drunk. Right? Yeah. You want to go first? Sure, or? okay, I'll try it. This piece is mine here. The inspiration was the uh, crashing of the Costa Concordia in Italy a few yeah. years ago. This was a very famous image from the press. When I first saw these photos, I simply couldn't believe it was real, that yeah. this boat had listed to the side. And so I made a, a hole using that design. Ooh! Oh. <laughs> I knew this guy was a ringer. <laughs> it's such an interactive exhibition, and it's such an accessible format. Everyone can understand mini golf. Oh. oh. And I think that can always be a struggle for contemporary arts, that people may feel intimidated about it, not know how to interact with it. I think this is where you might lurch your head. We thought on the one hand it's something everyone can get behind. Kids love it, families like it. But at the same time, it's not something you often see very artistically inspired. So we thought, wow, if we combine getting really good artists to flex their muscles with something like this that people are already kind of ready to enjoy and, and prone to really like, we might come up with something a bit magic. And I think that's, that's actually happened. Ole. Yes. This is my, uh, an artist who lives in LA, actually, Yara oh. El Sherbini. Okay. And she was looking at the idea of barriers and checkpoints. Probably the most visible one in the world now is the Israeli-Palestinian boundary, but it's, it speaks generally about these kinds of questions. So obviously a kid's not gonna get that, but it doesn't have to be the same thing for each person. That's the great thing about this exhibition. Doug doesn't mind how people choose to interpret it. He believes that art's also about entertainment as well, and the more people that can engage with art, the better. Ole! Oh, man! <laughs> this is... I can't say it's rigged, because it's my course. It's interactive, so when you do something interactive, it raises the possibility of thinking, hey, what's your role in this? So you see these, these are all sort of pointing at oh, the, these are the fellow. Oh, guns. Yeah, they're sort of meant to reference guns. This piece here by John Comfra is all about um, the, basically just racial violence in the States. Right. So if, me as a white guy playing that whole, aiming at a young black fellow on his knees, the political implications are, if you want to go down that route, you know, pretty strong. Hey! That works. Okay. A couple of twos. I'm back, baby, I'm back. Prior to this, have you seen much intersection between golf and art? I, I don't see that much of it in no, my life. No, I hadn't come across it before, um, but it does make perfect sense in a way because it is so sculptural uh, in its form. It almost makes you think, oh, it's surprising it's not been done before. You know, it's funny, I teach students a lot and I tell them that in order to be good artists, you need to think about it like being golfers. Really? It's not me against you. It's me playing my best game. And if I do well, maybe I'll go somewhere. Whoop. OK. 
Okay, it's squirted out a little bit to the right, but... Okay. Whether you're a kid and you just want to sort of crank your ball into something and wind it up and play, uh, or whether you want to really appreciate where the artists are coming from uh, with what they're trying to communicate, I think this is a perfect example of entertainment, yet also uh, quite intellectually stimulating at the same time. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Right. And for me, art that can combine uh, having a good time and being thought-provoking is doing something special. And I think we've, uh, luckily, we've managed to do that here. We've got to count our scores. Ah, thank You're you. In. Thank you. Okay. This is going right back into your cause, so. Okay, no, just buy a pint. Just, yeah. You know, here in England, <laughs> you need to have a few pints. If you walk, supposedly you walk it's, five miles. Oh, that's actually very good. Yeah, it's equivalent to running three. Excellent. If you walk a golf course. So yeah. this would be the equivalent to walking around the block. This would be equivalent to My getting name. a coffee in yeah. the morning <laughs> in your own or house. Or a beer.